Hey, Rick. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Smarketing Show this week. Rick, you're all fancy with your tie on. It must be because it's the American Thanksgiving week, is it? It is. Happy Thanksgiving <laughs> to our American friends. We already had ours in Canada, but uh, yeah, I wanted to step it up a little notch. Big weekend for those folks. They lose it down there on Thanksgiving. They absolutely do. It's like their Christmas. Um, this week, we're going to talk, it's, you know, we're nearing, nearing year end. We're going to talk about surveys, different types of surveys we can do. Six different ones, or are we covering five or six now that I've just said that? So we've got five surveys and it's five. a good time right now to put a dipstick, we believe anyway, whether it's your internal customers, your external customers, just to kind of make sure you're doing the right things. Maybe you want to continue doing start, stop, continue, you know, pending feedback. And, you know, there's an old saying, Melissa, that I talk a lot about in our events. And it's, you know, it's what you learn after you think you know it all that really counts. And I think that doing a survey or poll like we'll talk about today will help a lot. But let's get started maybe with some quick best practices that we've learned after doing so many surveys for so many different companies. Yeah, absolutely. So I think keep it short, right? Keep it short, keep it simple make your intentions bang on. What do you mean make your intentions bang on? Like uh... Meaning, be intentional about what you're going after, right? You have a target, obviously, that you're, you're going after. So don't make it so, you know, out there that that it's not scoped. So scope it towards your target audience, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Your target objective, what you're trying to yeah. accomplish. Yeah. yeah. And the one thing that I think has been really helpful for us is to actually state the time that we think the participant will need to complete it. So we're big on like a two minute survey, a three minute survey where people go, Hey, I got time for a couple minutes, but we've yeah. all been in those layered surveys where I'm now on page, you know, three of 20. And it's like, I, I give up. I, I won't complete it. Absolutely. That bar going across saying you're only 20% done and they need another hour of your time. Feels like jail bars to me. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, you know, put a lure at the back end, like an incentive, right? So if you complete this by a certain time and, oh, by the way, make sure you've got an expiry date, right? With no ending, they'll go on forever. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we'll often give a gift card or some incentive to push, push them across the line. And the other thing I had, I'm not sure it's on your list, is sometimes, you know, we'll just survey a particular audience. So maybe it's the salespeople or customer facing people. And we found it really beneficial, especially when creating a new website for a client to survey everybody, whether it's the person that does deliveries or it's the mm -hmm. Uh, dispatcher in the service area or uh, whoever it is, because it's funny how people outside of their department or people outside of a particular department have ideas about how that particular department, you know, could operate better. So I would just go wider versus thinner, depending on, of course, the scope of your survey. Yeah, for sure. I also think there's a couple ways, right, as well. You can ask long answer questions, a couple of them, or you can you can just get them to click right? It's optional. There's A, B, C, or D. Um, so B what, I, what I like about the A, B, C, or D is actually when the surveys come back, you can actually see visual data. So pie charts or bar charts. So that's yeah. a big advantage I like in a lot of the surveys we do. Yeah, absolutely. What else? What else do you have? That's it. I'm empty. I'm ready to start with uh, survey or poll number one. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't you start? So one of the favorite ones that uh, comes out of my 30-day uh, LinkedIn bootcamp is, Rick, how do we do a LinkedIn poll? Now, I would call it a survey or poll, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to show you right now because a lot of people, maybe if you know how to do it, but a lot of people surprisingly don't and would like to do it. So in 30 seconds, I'm going to walk you through how to do a poll right away on LinkedIn. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to click start a post, right? Then at the bottom there, you're going to select create a poll. It's one of the options, right? Like adding a photo, et cetera. Select create a poll. Enter your questions, whatever your question is. You know, what day of the week do you think is best for prospecting? Or what day of the week is best for an email campaign, for example, right? Then you'll put in your options, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, however many options you want. Make sure you fill out the poll duration. So how long do you want it to go one day a week or whatever? So there's an expiry. And then just add your text to the top, right? To overview to the person looking at your post, what the post is about a little bit, and then post it and away you go. Now you've done a LinkedIn poll. And I, I've found these to be really uh, insightful, entertaining, um, and uh, I found them very valuable. Now, I, I wouldn't do them like, you know, very, very often. I try to space mine out, but of course, it's up to you now that you know how to do it. Yeah, I agree, Rick. I, I no, don't run too many at the same time. You're going to lose people. However, I agree with you. They're entertaining and they're engaging. 
as opposed to someone having to read a bunch of stuff, hey, it's a pool. Let me get let me get involved. So I, I really like that. And just to you know dovetail. So a lot of times you can create more posts out of the feedback from the poll that you did. You know, hey, I did this poll. Here's the results. Because a lot of people may lose track of you know yeah. the they completed themselves. Yeah, no, I like that idea too. All right. As we're nearing the end of the year, what about a customer survey? So whether it be customer satisfaction, uh, post-purchase, whatever, there's all kinds of options to pull or survey your customers. I think it just really allows you to measure where are your customers at? Are they satisfied with your products or services? Where can we as a company pivot for 2023 if if they're unhappy, gives us a chance to respond accordingly? Um, are they loyal um, to our brand or our product? Um, determining whether, you know, they're a lifetimer or are they transactional? I mean, there's there's plenty, plenty of things we can garner from from a customer survey. I think a lot of companies that we work with are probably a little timid to do a survey because in some cases they're afraid of the feedback uh, they may get. But, you know, I, I don't know a better way to kind of set your charter for next year, next month, next week, whatever, than to get feedback. And um, so, for example, right now, uh, real life application for each of our digital marketing clients, we've provided them with a survey to pass forward to their salespeople, because a lot of times the salespeople, I know when I was in sales, I was like, you know, what the heck is marketing doing? Why are they doing it that way? And so right now we're surveying our customers to say, hey, what did you like in terms of the digital marketing that we've provided? What did you see someone else do that you think we might want to kind of learn from? And then what suggestions do you have? And I think if nothing else, A, you're going to get great feedback, but B, mm-hmm. you're going to get validation on what you're doing. And of course, a lot of really good ideas um, moving forward. And again, I go back to my point earlier. Sometimes it's good to survey beyond just your target audience because it's mm-hmm. always interesting how people outside that zone often have great ideas for what you're really looking for. I agree. Another cool thing I thought of with respect to the customer survey is depending on your feedback, right, from the client, if it's really great, why not ask them for a Google review? Right. So, so you can follow up, you mean after they complete the survey? Yeah. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah. Yeah. So just another thought on that you one. Know, just, you don't want to get off into another episode here, but Google reviews, I, I can't stress it enough. Like it's a sleeping giant for a lot of B2B sales organizations. Like if you went and looked at your last Google review, never mind what your review status is, mm-hmm. um, you know, with our clients, we're using those in social posts, we're using them in presentations, in proposals, like you name it. And a great idea coming off a survey. Good, yeah. good idea. Love it. All right, so Melissa, we talked about you know surveying our customers, but what about our internal customers? I know you do a lot of those kind of surveys internally. Maybe you could talk to the employee survey. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I like new hire surveys, right? How was our onboarding process or process, depending if you're in US or Canada? What what does that look like? And then you can you know um, make any changes you need for future onboarding or for new hires. It provides information on. Um, identifying, you know, issues internally, if it's not for new hires, but any issues or, or things we're doing well that we can keep doing or pivot. Um, it, I think it bolsters team morale. They actually care about what I think. Um, you know what I mean? And then you can get feedback from them. And I think with an employee survey as well, there's, there's different facets, right? I talked about the new hire and the onboarding or just, you know, internal generalized. Um, you can have job satisfaction. How do you like your job, your particular role? Like if, whether you're a digital marketing person, a customer service person, are you in admin? Are you, you know, what are you in sales? So you can, you can, uh, do that. You can do training evaluation. If if you're a big organization that has different training, you can evaluate your training and where do you need to make, you know, changes. Uh, What about an exit interview even? I mean, you may do that live, but if you're massive or the person just exits, you could send them a a thing and say, hey, how, how did we do? Where can we improve moving forward? Or maybe it had nothing to do with us, but at least we know why they exited. So I, you know, all good points. I think the question is, when's the last time you surveyed your customers, your employees, whether they be new hire, everybody, you know, we're in an era of the great resignation. And, you know, we see pretty much, uh, you know, a fist fight for talent out there nowadays. So doing the dipstick temperature check on your own people, I don't think would be a bad idea uh, for sure. So we talked about the LinkedIn poll. Uh, of course, there's all kinds of surveys and polls you can do on Facebook and Instagram, these other platforms. Um, 
the employee survey we just talked about, we talked about the customer survey. Let me share with you now something we're doing with websites in terms of a poll or survey. So a lot of our clients are technology resellers. You can do this in any sector, but on the websites, what we're placing now is kind of a sequence of questions that the customer uh, answers. So they would rate themselves on their current position in a certain scenario. Now, as the customer proceeds answering these questions, our intention from a sales or marketing standpoint is have the customer understand, geez, I'm maybe not that strong in that area and awakens them to maybe an opportunity to improve, hence a sales uh, opportunity. So we're using these things called tech checks on websites, very powerful. And uh, again, it's a self-serve thing a customer can complete. And as they are asked and answer every question, their mind starts to open in terms of, hey, maybe this is something I should prioritize and hence create an opportunity for our customer. So a lead generation survey or poll, very powerful. Yeah, like that one. Next up, I'm thinking event surveys. So pre and post. And, you know, we do a lot of pre for every event we do, Rick, where you you go out and do speaking events, which you've done thousands of them. And I love it because especially in a, within a sales organization, we can say to them, hey, this is what you as the leadership team want to want me to come in and speak on. However, what do your salespeople think? So let's pull them. Let's survey them quickly. Let's get their honest feedback. And then you can scope your messaging. So you're right down the pipe in terms of what they need when you show up that day. Another thing you do, maybe I'm giving it all away here, is you like to interview two or three people, even a phone interview. I know that goes beyond the survey, but it's still a survey, right? You're still talking to their people. And uh, so I think that pre one is really good. Do you have anything to add on that pre? Just, just I think that um, a lot of times, you know, as a speaker, we'll get, uh, and, and let me, you know, come to a salesperson before you're going into a big presentation, you may have an assumption that this is the lane that you want to take. Mm-hmm. It's always surprising for me uh, what people say before uh, the meeting that helps you kind of cater to them. So a lot of times I'll take comments from the survey and have those in my early visuals to say, look, mm-hmm. you know, this is what you said. This is what, and I think whatever survey you're doing in terms of whether it's customers or employees, or in this case, an event, I think it's important to share the results of the survey uh, when it's appropriate with the target audience, because, you know, I did this, sure, I got the gift card or qualified for the drawing, but, you know, what happened? And then, you know, so pre-survey, I think underutilized. The other thing I think that is really powerful, Melissa, is when you host one of the virtual events, Mm-hmm. Coming off the event, maybe you can explain what we're doing with that survey there. So someone's showing up for a webinar, maybe it's a virtual event, whatever, maybe walk them through what, what and why we're doing the survey at the back end. Yeah, absolutely. So we try to, like we said in the beginning, right, keep it short, keep it simple. And people are just trying to get off the virtual event, whatever. So we do oftentimes tease them at the front end with an incentive, which we talked about earlier, you know, hey, those, there's a gift card at the end, stay tuned. And then if you complete the survey, we're going to do a draw. And so we typically ask one question. And that one question is, you know, uh, something a little self-serving. Do you, would you like someone to follow up with you and book an appointment for X or would you like an assessment done or are you interested in da, 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 da. And we make it pretty straightforward and simple and we get great feedback from that. Great feedback and, uh, and not a long answer, just yes or no. And again, allows you to reach back out to these people or even gives us permission in general. Would you, would you be willing, you know, to hear about more of our webinars in the future? Do you have a topic you could suggest? So it allows us to plan for future events with this company and, or, get a lead potentially yeah so you know we i just you know i, I watch a lot of webinars because i you know i like to study as i know you do mm-hmm. and i can't tell you how many end and that's it we wrap it up and i really like the way you know what you do is you place a carrot out there and often i think it's more than one question so we may ask questions like uh you know what did you think of this like was mm-hmm. it valuable what other topics would you like to see so these are the survey questions again that feed the engine to go forward mm-hmm. um You know, you'll ask things, you know, as you said, from a lead generation standpoint, as you mentioned, like, you know, would you like to meet with us about X or whatever it is? So I I just think that post survey after a live or virtual event, very, very insightful. So to wrap things up, because a lot of people at Thanksgiving are probably looking to cut into something better than uh, maybe even this marketing show. Just think of what we talked about today. What's that? But before you even wrap up, Rick, I thought of one more thing here Um, with the post. 
one of the things we do in our live events is ask for a referral. Do you have somebody that might be interested? Right. So it just even, it's just another layer. And yeah. I, I'm shocked. Everybody fills that out. Everybody has somebody they can recommend. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's something I learned from a, a great company a long time ago. And it's funny how many people are satisfied, like you say, with what you do. Mm-hmm. And this could, again, go to the customer survey. You know, this could be a great question. I'm glad you brought that up. So I think our point today was, you know, whatever you're doing, um, maybe there's a way to complement what your uh, business objectives are with a poll or a survey. We talked about LinkedIn, right? A one-to-one or a company-to-many. You could do an employee survey, right? A dipstick on how the temperature people are right now, what they like to see more of, less of, et cetera. The customer survey to help you kind of stay on the pavement going forward. The website lead generation surveys we talked about. And lastly, the pre and post event survey. Great ideas, Melissa. These are working for us, by the way, folks. And uh, this is why we're bringing them forward to you. So thanks for uh, sharing what you did, Melissa. Any closing comments today? I uh, I think these are great ideas. And um, do it. Do it. They won't do it. But let's get them to do it, Rick. Especially your LinkedIn poll, I think. Or a social media poll, whether it's Instagram or Facebook. Just try it. As what do you have to lose, right? Great ideas are only as good as their execution. Absolutely. So enjoy your turkey, put your stretchy pants on, and we'll see you next week on this marketing show.